This video is going to be an ultimate guide to animation paths inside of DaVinci Resolve. The end goal is going to be to create this B animation, and I'll let you in on a secret. It's really easy. Thanks to Audio for making this video possible. I'll talk more about them later and let you know how you can get 70% off. Animation paths are probably one of the coolest things when animating stuff inside of Fusion. They're really good for making natural, smooth looking motions like the bee animation, or maybe animating a computer mouse. There's a ton of possibilities, so let's first start with how animation paths work. So to create an animation path, all you need to do is add a keyframe on a center X and Y control. Then move forward in the composition and move the object. You can see Fusion's automatically going to draw a line in between those two points, and that is a path that the object is going to take. Anytime you add an animation path, you'll notice that the modifiers tab becomes active. If I click on that, we can see the added a path modifier. And this has a bunch of controls in here. The most important one is going to be the displacement control. You'll notice by default you cannot change this control, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. At the beginning of the path, you can see the displacement value is equal to 0. And when you get to the end of the path, it is going to be equal to 1. Right now, this is really easy to understand. When you're at the first point, it's equal to 0, and at the second point, it's equal to 1. Let's go a few frames into the animation and add another keyframe. I'm going to move it all the way over here. And you'll notice when I do that, it'll also add a new keyframe on the displacement control. Let's also go a few frames after the last keyframe and move the B back to the other side. Again, the displacement control added a keyframe. If we go back to the keyframe before that, you can see this one is no longer equal to 1. When working with the displacement control, 0 is always going to be equal to the very first point, and 1 is going to be equal to the last point. If I play this right now, you can watch the displacement slider. This is going to have the same speed that the B is going to have in the viewport. See, it's going to be fast, then slow, and then once it gets to the end, it's fast again. Whenever you add a keyframe on the center X and Y control, just like that, it's automatically going to add a keyframe on the displacement slider, so that way all of the speed and positions are correct. But let's go back to what I was talking about before, customizing the displacement slider. If we want to do this, we have to right click on the control and then do remove path 1 displacement. Doing that will remove the animation, but it keeps the path in the viewport. This means that we can take the displacement slider and move it back and forth to change where it is on the path. Now if we do a similar animation, adding a keyframe at the beginning and then going 60 frames in and adding a keyframe at 1, you'll notice that rather than varying in speed, it's going to have the exact same speed the entire way through. If you wanted to speed it up like it was before, you'd have to add multiple keyframes throughout the composition. Now let's say I wanted to add a new point. If I change the position at all, it's automatically going to add a keyframe at that location. Now if you want to add a point that doesn't have a keyframe linked to it, we're not able to do that anymore. To achieve this, you would have to right click on the displacement and remove the path. From there, you can add in any points that you like without actually creating a keyframe. Then you can go back and do that same animation and it will be updated so it has that consistent speed throughout the entire clip. So now that you understand those basics of how animation paths work, let's talk about applying that to the B animation. But first, one thing that every creator needs, whether you're making vlogs, gaming videos, or motion graphics, is high quality music and sound effects. Take a look at our animation from the beginning. And now listen to it without the sound effects. It just lacks a certain energy and life that the sound design brought. And that's why I partnered with Audio to bring you an affordable sound library without sacrificing on quality. They have a really slick UI that makes it easy to find the songs that suit your video. Plus, you can even add favorites or create playlists to reuse sound effects and music. In addition to that, they're adding new content every day. Right now, their lifetime music package is on sale for only 200 hours, but that's ending soon, so make sure you grab that before it goes away. Or using my link down below, you can get 70% off the Audio Pro plan, which includes unlimited music and sound effects for just $59 for the first year. Click the first link in the description to learn more. Okay, so first we're going to animate the B so it has a consistent speed throughout the entire composition. If I view the B image that I have off on the left viewer, you can see it is in 1080 by 1080. For the animation to work properly, it needs to match the composition settings, which if we look on the right here, is 1920 by 1080. So to fix this, click on the node and then do shift space and type in crop. If we view the crop node now, you can see it's going to resize it to 1920 by 1080. And if we go over in the inspector, we can do keep centered and it'll put the B back in the center of the frame. And after doing that, let's do shift space again and add in a transform node. This is what we're going to use to actually animate the B. So I'm going to size the B down here and then I'm going to add the first and last point. If we play this, you can see the B is just going to have a linear motion across the screen. Let's fix that. Since we haven't removed the default animation on the displacement control yet, we can just click to add points anywhere in the path and it will not create a keyframe. I'm going to add two points uh, and spread them out like this, and then grab these animation handles to adjust the curve of the path. I like to line those up right away so it has a smooth arc going around the animation curve. If you hold down control when grabbing onto one of the handles, you can adjust it independent from the other one. 
So I'm just going to play with it here until I have a nice loop effect that the bee is going to be doing. And now if we play this, you can see the bee is going to go around in the loop and then move off to the right side of the frame. To make this animation a little bit more cartoony, what I want is the bee to slow down in the middle here and then speed off at the end. To do that, we're going to be using the spline editor. And to access that, you can press the button up in the top right. If I click on the transform node, I can then check the box right here and all of it's going to show up. I can do control F to fit this to the view and then I can start playing around with the settings. The spline editor displays the time from left to right. You can see the frame 0 is right here and frame 65 is right here. Then up and down it shows the actual value of the animation. So down at the bottom the displacement slider is equal to 0 and up at the top here it's equal to 1. Since the animation is technically the same speed throughout the whole composition, you're going to see a straight line right here. And by manipulating that, we can change how fast or slow the bee is moving. If I click on one of the keyframes, you can see an animation handle is going to appear right here. And if I just add a curve to this right here to make it go faster at the beginning, slow down in the middle, and then speed up at the end, we can go ahead and hit play and you can see it's already going to have that effect right there. Now I can play around with this to get it timed just right. And it can be a little bit annoying just to get it to slow down in the right spot and then speed up at the right time as well. We already have a great looking animation. Now let's talk about another really cool part about animation paths, and that's tying other controls to it. You noticed in the beginning animation that the bee is always facing the direction that it's traveling. And right now it's facing backwards and it really doesn't look that right. And I didn't do this by manually going through and adding a bunch of keyframes on the angle to make sure it's facing the right direction. Instead, I just clicked right on the angle control, went to connect to, path 1, and then heading. And as soon as I do that, you can see that the bee's rotation matches the path. But it's a little messed up still because the bee is going backwards. So to fix that, let's go to the modifiers tab, and on the heading offset, I'm going to type in 180 degrees to flip it around. You can see it's still not quite right. The B is upside down. So the best way to fix this is just to come to tools, and then on the flip, flip the vertical axis. And now if we watch this, the B is facing the correct direction, isn't upside down, and it is going along the animation path. So we're already making really good progress on this animation, but there's one more thing that I want to touch on, and that is connecting other objects to this animation path. The use case I have for this is that little trail that I put behind the B at the intro animation. And as you might have guessed, this one is also really easy to create. So before my actual B image, I'm going to add in a rectangle as well as a background node. If I connect those up and view it off to the side, I can change the color of the background node to be white. White. And then I'm also going to take the rectangle and change the size just to make it a little dashed line. You don't want this to be that big, and we can always come back and customize this later. After doing that, I'm going to add in a transform node after the background node. And then I'm going to come over to the center X and Y, do connect to, path 1, and then do position. If I merge up this transform node and view this merge off on the side, you can see that this line is going to follow the exact path of the B. And just like before, we can connect the angle to the path 1 heading, so that way it is also facing the correct direction. Now, I want to make a little trail, so I'm going to do shift space and add in a duplicate node right after the transform. If we bring this up to 5 or 6 copies, we can add a little bit of a time offset to add a little bit of spacing between these lines. Now, you don't want to do too much so they're way too spaced out, but you also don't want to do not enough so that way they're all grouped together. I like adding a little over one frame of delay in between each one. And now we have a nice trail going around. It also kind of shows the speed because it expands when the bee's going really fast and compresses when it slows down. One last thing on the fusion page to level up this animation is going to be to add motion blur. If I go into both transform nodes, I can go to the settings tab, enable motion blur, and bring the quality up to around 8 or 10. Now this will slow down your system a little bit, so wait till the end to turn this on. And the last couple steps is to add a nice background as well as some sound effects from audio.com and you're all set with a really nice looking bee animation. Right now I am working on a fusion course called Fusion Mastery. It's not out yet but you can sign up with the link down below to get an exclusive discount when the course actually does come out. It's going to take you from being a beginner in fusion all the way up to an expert so you can create your own effects just like this. But that's going to be it for this video. Again, check out the link down below to receive your discount for audio.com. And thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. Please let me know if you guys have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one.